Hey guys, now that I've introduced the conservation of energy equation, I want to show you a few examples of how to use it. Let's check it out. So one really important point about the energy equation is that energy problems will always include two points or more. And I'll show you that in the example. Okay? Here, I've summarized a lot of the equations we talked about. Kinetic energy, potential energy is a combination of both. Gravitational potential energy is MGH. This is the total, um, the complete conservation of energy equation, which is the most important out of all of these. And then the work by non-conservative forces is a combination of the work done by applied forces or by you, and then the work done by frictional forces, which we're not going to have to worry about in this page. All right. So the conservation of energy, we're going to use it. It's going to be very useful when the speed and or the height of an object are changing. And one way to remember this is kinetic energy depends on speed and potential energy has to do with height. So if these numbers are changing, you want to use the conservation of energy equation. Okay. The most important task as you're going through the conservation of energy equation and solving these problems is to identify which types of energies exist at the beginning and the end of the problem. These problems are problems of two or more points, so we're going to have initial and final, as you can see also in the equation, initial and final. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's, let's get started here. So you have a four kilogram object that you're going to launch directly up. So let me draw a little, little four kilogram object here. You're going to throw it up here. Uh, I'm going to say that you give it some sort of initial velocity um, of 40, and it's here on the floor. And you're going to throw it up, and we're going to use conservation of energy to find the maximum height. What happens at the maximum height is that over here, the final velocity is zero at the maximum height. But I want to know what is the height at that point. So I want to know the final height because I'm going from initial to final over here. So I want to know what is the final height. And by the way, the initial height is zero. Okay? You didn't necessarily have to list all this. You're going to sooner or later run into it when you write the energy equation. So when I say use conservation of energy, I mean to say that you are going to solve this using the big energy equation right here. Some problems won't tell you to do it this way, uh, but you would still do it like this. Okay, so that's the big equation. Let's go through each element and try to determine which ones we have. Kinetic energy um, has to do with speed, and this has a velocity or speed in the beginning, so I do have kinetic energy. Potential energy has to do with height, and at the beginning, this thing is at the floor. Uh, I'm launching it from the ground, so the height is zero. Work non-conservative is a combination of the work done by you plus the work done by friction. There is no air resistance. We're going to ignore that, so there's no sort of friction here, so that's just zero. The work done by you, in this case, it's tricky, and I want to address that. Um, you might think that if you're throwing something, then you're certainly doing work on this object, and you are. When you bring the object from a speed of zero to a speed of, in this case, 40, you're doing work. But in this situation, we consider the initial part of the, the, of the motion. Initial here means once it leaves your hand with 40. Notice that I said that the initial velocity is 40 meters per second. So it going from zero and then leaving your hand from to, uh, at 40, that certainly has some work done by you, but that happened before the initial part of the problem. And because it happened before this point here, you are not doing any work between initial and final. The work done by you here would only count if you're doing work while this thing is moving, after it's left your hand, um, and then until it gets to the top, okay? So you're sort of doing work before um, the point where it would count, okay? So if I throw something at a certain speed and you use that initial speed, then the work done by you is zero, okay? A little tricky, but it leaves your hand um, and you're not doing anything anymore. One way to think about it again is to just think, well, am I doing any work um, once it, between once it starts moving and then the end of the motion here? And the answer there is no, okay? So I wanted to explain that in detail so we don't have to worry about that in future problems. So the work done by you is zero. There's no non-conservative work. Kinetic energy at the end. Um, at the end, you reach a speed of zero. You stop momentar uh, momentarily, so the kinetic energy is zero. And potential energy has to do with height. You do have a height, so you do have potential energy. If you look here, the only two types of energies we have are these two. 
and I can write kinetic initial equals potential final. Again, this is a, an equation left equals right, but it's also a statement of conversion of energies. All the kinetic energy became potential energy. All the speed in the beginning became height at the end, okay? Let's expand this, and what I mean by that is let's write what kinetic energy stands for, which is half mv squared, and this is initial, and potential energy stands for mgh, and it's final heights because it's final potential energy. Notice that I can cancel the masses. Very often we're going to do this, and since I'm looking for the final height, I just have to solve here. h final is v initial squared divided by 2. Divide g on both sides, and this ends up here. So this is 40 squared 2. I'm going to plug in and grab it as a 10 just to make the math a little bit easier. Um, on your test, unless your, your professor says otherwise, you would plug in a 9.8. Um, so if you do this, you get a 80 meters. If you use 9.8, you would get something like 81.6, I believe. Okay, that's it for this one. Um, I do have a practice problem for you guys, very similar, and I want you to try this out. Let's give it a shot. 